most of our calls are for pretty run-of-the-mill things, like wasp nests in attics, or raccoons living in the walls. That being said, Orion is considered a speciality pest control provider, due to the services we offer for atypical or unrecognised pests. Those terms may seem vague at the moment, but I promise, they'll make more sense in a second. A general rule of thumb, if you think that you're dealing with an unidentified animal, is that salt repels most things. Not everything, but most things. Ground-up white eggshells can be used as well, if you're environmentally conscious. I try to use them when I can, but salt is more readily available. Administering a line of salt to doors and windows, especially windows facing the west, is normally the first course of action we recommend to clients who are concerned about potential infestations from the unknown sorts of critters. However, if you believe that there is an infestation already taking place, it's also possible to use salt to try to contain the pest until someone is able to remove it. With all that being said, sometimes more aggressive action is necessary when dealing with an atypical pest. On that note, here's a little PSA from your friendly neighbourhood pest control specialist. Avoid coming into contact with any deer, raw venison, or servine faecal material for a while. I know that most people don't feel inclined to play with deer crap to begin with, but you would be amazed at the insane things I've seen grown adults do. And, unfortunately, many of those insane things were, indeed, scat related. Anyways, we received a call from a client claiming that her dog was attacked by a doe, of all things. Typically, we don't have to deal with deer since they tend to avoid humans. Normally, that's the Department of Wildlife's area of authority. But something was clearly off about this one. Initially, I was thinking that it had chronic wasting disease, since one of the symptoms noted in affected animals is that they no longer become skittish around humans. The client was understandably frantic on the phone. It just came up and bit my dog, and now it's in my yard. It won't leave, I swear it's waiting for us to come back out. Hmm. CWD is essentially deer Alzheimer's. So, attacks from affected deer are typically brought about by confusion on the poor dying animal's part. That prompted me to ask the client about how the deer looked. If it was emaciated, that would be a dead giveaway. She said its stomach was bulging, like it was pregnant. It was apparently watching her and her frightened doggy through the window, drooling. The distended stomach gave me a pause. That wasn't usual for CWD. Thankfully, it was a slow day, so I was able to get over there as soon as possible. Before I left, I called one of the guys from the Department of Wildlife, knowing that they'd want to hear about it, especially if this was some sort of deer disease that could be going around. The officer said that he and his partner would take a look, but they were going to arrive a bit later than me. No problem there. When possible, we live trap the pests that we are called out for. That being said, some of these unidentified animals can be extremely dangerous, which is why a firearm, a container of salt, and a knife with a silver blade are required to be on us for every call even if it appears to be something harmless. Appearances can be deceiving. 
My boss learned that the hard way once. As such, the salt and knife stay on my tool belt at all times. We do also have a tranquilizer gun for larger animals, which I thought would be useful for the deer. When I first got there, I didn't see the doe, so I circled around to the backyard, a trank gun at the ready. An expensive looking swing set shaped like a castle stood like a colourful fortress, the chains squeaking as they swayed in the wind. A few yards away, the deer snorted at me, its hoof stomping at the ground. The animal's fur was dishevelled, its ears were drawn back close to its head. Foamy strings of draw hung from the corners of its mouth. The white patch of fur on its neck, slick from the excessive salvation. Whether it was CWD or something else, this deer was definitely sick. Best not to get near it. I shot it with the trank gun. It lit out a small grunt of alarm, taking a few ungainly steps towards me. I stepped back trying to keep my distance until the animal could be knocked out. It shuddered, mouth opened like it was about to vomit. At first I thought the pink thing in its mouth was the doe's tongue, but then more appeared. Long tendrils unfurled from its throat, stretching along the grass towards me. A loud crack echoing in my ears as the deer's jaw snapped. The deer's body convulsed violently, its bloated stomach rapidly shrinking as these abhorrent things slithered out of its mouth. My stomach lurched at the sight. I lit out an extremely professional sounding whimper as I booked it for the swing set. Something you should know about me is that I have a phobia of worms. Snakes, spiders, rats, no problem. But for some reason, worms make my skin crawl. The deer had fallen to the ground. The poor animal still alive and quaking as its body was dragged by the worms, crawling out of its throat across the lawn, inching towards me. A low, pained noise came from the deer, each time that it was jerked along. Once I'd pulled myself into the swing set's tower, I took aim at the deer's head with my rifle, and fired. Blood and grey matter splashed across the yard. The worms twitched, thrashing around like jump ropes wielded by particularly aggressive toddlers. I shrank back, grimacing, becoming slightly nauseous when I looked a little too closely at where they protruded at what was left of the deer's open mouth. I fired again. The worms jolted from the impact, their frashes becoming more lethargic as their host died. The ropey bodies slowed their convulsing down to mere twitches, until they eventually were limp on the ground, fanned out in separate directions along the grass. I watched the worms warily, not convinced that they weren't going to suddenly start writhing again. Gingerly, I reached for the salt, wondering if I should go down and pour it on the worms, make sure that they were actually dead. All I had to do was go down there, where they were. Worms, roughly the length and width of human intestines. Worms that appeared to have taken over the body of a deer. Fuck me. With a deep breath, I reluctantly slid down the slide to get down from the tower. With how tall I am. I scooted only a tiny bit before the soles of my boots touched the ground. My jaw clenched in anticipation. I got to my feet quickly 
as one of the worms weakly squirmed, trying fruitlessly to get nearer to me. I was close enough to see now that it had a round, jawless mouth, edged by rows upon rows of small, sharp teeth. Ugh! Resisting the urge to flinch away, I lifted the lid for the salt, then dumped it on the horrible creature. It began its thrashing anew, and I jumped back, preparing to run back onto the swing set like the big hero that I am. But, thankfully, the worm seemed to be in its death throes. After its last bout of writhing, its movements finally ceased. Ah, oh, thank God. I repeated this process with the other ones until they were all immobile. By the time I was done, I was shaky, trying to regain my composure. I promise, I'm not this squeamish about most of the things we deal with. It's just worms that get to me. And even then, I still get it done. I waited until the wildlife guy showed up to knock on the client's door. Truthfully, my hands were still shaking a little, and since my adrenaline was only just wearing off, so I kept them in my pockets. I didn't want her to get even more freaked out than she already was, especially with the news I was about to give her. I informed her that the deer's body was being taken by the Department of Wildlife to run some tests, advising her to take her dog to the vet to check for any signs that the worms may have infected it. Her face paled. Worms? Unfortunately, yes. I replied, resisting a shudder as I recalled their rows of teeth against my will. I don't know how these species of parasites spread, so, just to be safe, have your dog checked. The Department of Wildlife is going to take over from here. They'll be able to give you more information once they've examined the deer a bit. Before I left, I discovered that the wildlife guys were just as disturbed by the worms as I was. One officer said that he'd never seen anything like it. They planned to take the doe's body for testing, and said that they let both the client and me know if they found anything out. Later that evening, I received a call from the Department of Wildlife. They wanted to know exactly what I did to kill the worms. I told them, growing concerned. The client's dog was being quarantined, after the vet found strange readings in its blood work. That made my blood chill. The client and her family were also being advised to visit a doctor, in case any of them also came into contact with any infected biological material. The wildlife officer advised me to do the same. They weren't sure if the worms could infect humans, but since it had potentially crossed the species barrier by infecting our client's labradoodle, they recommended extreme caution. I didn't think I came into contact with the worms, but I know better than to mess around with things like this. Even though my doctor assured me in my initial assessment that everything seemed normal, I was convinced that any minor twinge in my body was a worm squirming around in my guts while I waited for my test results. In the end, everything came back normal. Good. I don't think I am emotionally or psychologically equipped to deal with massive worms growing inside of me. Unfortunately, the dog wasn't so lucky. It's not dead, don't worry. It just had to deal with numerous anthelmintic medications until the vets found one that was effective. Thankfully, it's alive and back to its inviolable life as a spoiled Labradoodle. Though, I guess the poor thing is more skittish than it used to be. Can't say I blame it. 
it was good to know that this parasite is treatable, as long as it's caught early enough. Granted, it isn't clear how long that window is open for. Hours? Days? Weeks? According to the officer I spoke to, it was difficult to tell how long the doe was infected for. Meanwhile, the dog had only been bitten a few hours prior to needing aggressive anti-worm treatment. They must spread and grow pretty fast. That gives me the impression that the treatment window must be pretty small. When I mentioned atypical organisms earlier, things like those worms were what I meant. They're merely animals that haven't been identified yet. We get a lot of them around here. Not parasitic worms, thank god. I'd need a career change if that were the case. I mean odd critters in general. Not all of them are hostile, either. Like with any animal. Most of the time, it all depends on how you treat them. Take the housekeepers, for example. While I was still waiting to get my blood tests from the worm incident back, I had a call from a client that started with, Hey, I called the police, but they told me to talk to you, for some reason. Someone has been breaking into my house and cleaning it. They haven't taken anything, which is weird. I don't know what some rat catchers would know about that. Hmm. I rolled my eyes. We don't have any shortage of uppity suburban pricks like this who think that their silly little office jobs make them superior to everyone else. Huh. <laughs> Some rat catchers. Despite my irritation, when I spoke I was professional. Have you or anyone else experienced any sensations like being pinched in the middle of the night? What kind of question is... He started to snap, but I guess his brain must have turned on, because his tone suddenly changed. Actually, yes. What does that have to do with the... thing in my house? I ignored his question. Have you found any broken glassware? Uh, yes. How did you know that? Sounds like you have what we call... A housekeeper. They tend to get a little feisty if their work isn't appreciated. So if you leave out some cream before you go to bed at night, the problem should stop. The client adopted his snippy attitude again. Is that supposed to be a joke? Hm. No sir, I'm completely serious. If you leave the housekeeper the offering like I told you, It'll continue to clean your home without causing any more issues for you and your family. Can I speak to someone who actually knows what they're talking about? Mm, I was struggling to think of a reply that wasn't riddled with cuss words when a pale hand appeared in my face. When did the boss get in? And why did he look so awful? Was he sick? The boss flatly said, He wants to speak to the manager, doesn't he? Without another word, I handed him the phone. As the boss politely ripped the client a new one, I scanned him. He was always a pale guy to begin with, being Scandinavian. But he was even more pasty than usual. The permanent dark circles under his eyes even more pronounced. Another thing that stood out was that he had a bandana tied around his neck. An odd fashion choice for him. His arms were covered by the navy blue company jacket we all wore, so I couldn't check for what I truly needed to see. The client ended up hanging up on the boss. He shook his head, grumbling as he set the phone back in its cradle. Be prepared for this asshole to call back in a few days. I followed him into his office. Victor? 
Is everything all right? The boss didn't look at me as he said. I'm as great as I usually am. That wasn't a good answer. I was about to press the issue when he muttered. I'm not using again. Don't worry about it. All right? Reluctantly, I nodded, then went back to my desk. I've known Victor for years. He'd open up when he was ready. Sure enough, the dickhead did end up calling back three days later. Wouldn't you know it? He didn't follow our advice. Now, the housekeeper was angry, and somehow, that was our fault. Customer service, everybody. I dragged our new hire, Raina, along for this one to give her some experience. This was her first time seeing what happens when housekeepers are mistreated. I just prayed that it hadn't transformed. In case it hadn't, I took a container of fresh cream, hoping that a late offering would be enough to calm it. The client and his wife were cowering in a hotel, leaving the house entirely to us by giving us permission to use their hidden spare key. When we got inside, the place was wrecked. Broken glass littered the carpet and kitchen tiles. Cabinets were left wide open, emptied during the housekeeper's tirade. The white couch looked as if it had been clawed. Family photos were ripped up on the floor. I told Raina to keep her container of salt handy. Wide-eyed, head swiveling to take in the state of the house. She obliged. It hasn't followed the family, which hopefully means that it hasn't transformed yet. I informed her. So, what does that mean? She asked. That means it can still be reasoned with. I found a bowl that hadn't been smashed and poured the cream into it. I loudly announced that I had a gift for the housekeeper. Transformed housekeepers will still accept cream. They'll just try to pull your ears off afterwards. Anxiously, I waited to see what would come out. The floor above me creaked. Raina noticeably stiffened, looking at me for guidance trying to emulate my body language. One thing I can pride myself on is that I'm decent at pretending to be more calm than I actually am in circumstances like this, worm incident aside. The footsteps descended the stairs, revealing the client's agitated houseguest. The bipedal humanoid creature couldn't have been much taller than two feet. Neatly combed coarse brown hair covered its wrinkled body. Its brow was furrowed in a scowl. Its lip curled in distaste as it showed off crooked small teeth. Where it would have made sense for a nose to be was only a bony hole in its place. In summary, it hadn't transformed yet. Thank God. Disgruntled, the housekeeper stomped over to the bowl of cream, clutched it with both hands, and downed it in two gulps. The entire time, Raina watched with wide-eyed fascination. Once it was done, the housekeeper glared down at the table. It grumbled. You got any Baileys, girl? I do not. I replied ruefully. Mm. Shame. You'd be needing Baileys too, if you had to deal with these fucking people. Not wanting to get it angrier, I poured it some more cream. This time, it sipped gently at its offering, seeming to settle down some. When dealing with a housekeeper... It is important to always be polite. As such, 
I courteously asked the housekeeper if I could be excused for a brief moment to talk to Raina. He gruffly agreed. I whispered to her, Stop staring at him. He'll consider that rude. Instantly, Raina looked away from him. I continued, If you have to speak with the housekeeper, make sure you act like you're dealing with royalty. No smart-mouthing. And no matter what, do not smile or laugh in its presence. Don't tell it your name, and don't ask for his. Understood? She furrowed her brow at me, but didn't question me as she did what she was told, coming over to join us at the kitchen table. When I rejoined the housekeeper, I said mildly, Your hosts have been ungracious. The housekeeper snorted. No need to sugarcoat it, girl. Fucking ill-mannered. Snot-nosed, layabout jack-offs is what I'd reckon they are. I nodded. He wasn't wrong. Raina, following my lead, did the same. All I ask for is a damn bowl of cream at the end of a long day's work. But these people... Wouldn't know a good day's work if it bit him on the ass. Well, he's as fucking wastes of air, I reckon. It carried on ranting and raving like that, between sips of cream. Silently, I lit it, making sure to keep my eye contact brief enough to avoid staring, but long enough that the housekeeper would know that I was properly paying attention to our one-sided conversation. The housekeeper's vocal rampaging continued. They couldn't even be bothered to rid of me themselves. They sent two little girls to do it, and to do it for them. Maybe I'll stay, just to spite them. Break some more of their precious china. Keeping my tone gentle, the same voice I use for young children and argumentative clients, I tried to de-escalate things. But you're such a dedicated worker. Your talents are wasted on people like this. You deserve to be recognized for your efforts. The housekeeper sipped his cream thoughtfully. Mm. You speak truths, girl. Truths they are. I waited patiently for him to finish his bowl of cream. Raina's eyes and mouth were tight with anxiety as the room quieted with the exception of the housekeeper gulping down his drink. Finally, he set the bowl down and declared, I'll be seeking elsewhere. I'll seek the worthy. Internally, I breathed a sigh of relief. We wouldn't have to deal with a transformed housekeeper today. The two idiots that pissed it off won't go missing. Not like others who we couldn't get to in time. The client may be a prick, but I don't wish that upon him. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Before we left, I had Raina help me line all of the house's entryways with salt. While I doubted the housekeeper would come back, I didn't want to leave it to chance. So... Do you think our client was grateful? Take a guess. For whatever reason, the idiot thought we'd clean his house for him after we got rid of the housekeeper. He and Victor got into it over the phone, and the client threatened to sue for something. Fucker. Huh. Should have just let the housekeeper destroy the place. I chose these two cases for a few reasons. The first being that I want everyone to be aware of the dear parasites. Please, be careful out there. The second reason is that Orion operates in only a few counties in Pennsylvania and Ohio. While we can't help everyone, we can at least arm you all with the information so that you don't get in a bad situation with an unidentified animal. Just remember, when in doubt, salt. 
and if you awaken to find that your house is now suddenly spotless, be gracious. Do better than the idiot mentioned before. Hello, sinister listeners. If you've enjoyed this story, then you'll find all the author's information in the description below. For more content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to succumb to the sinister.